law of cosines 8.5c, it's really important that you saw the law of sines in 8.5b. There's 12 previous videos for chapter 8 that are linked in the description. You can find them in the geometry playlist. So we learned about the law of sines and when we can use it to solve a triangle in the previous video, 8.5b. We can use it when we have two angle measures and any side length, ASA or AAS, or when we have two side lengths and a non-included angle measure. But the law of sines can't be used to solve every triangle. If we know two side lengths and the included angle measure, SAS, or if we know all three side lengths, SSS, we can't use the law of sines. Instead, we can use the law of cosines. And here it is. It says in the theorem for any triangle, ABC, with side lengths A, B, and C, we can do A squared is equal to B squared plus C squared minus 2 times B times C cosine of A. We can do B squared is equal to A squared plus C squared minus 2 times A times C cosine of B. And we can do C squared is equal to A squared plus B squared minus 2 times A times B cosine of C. And the angle is across the equal sign from its corresponding side. We can use the law of cosines to solve a triangle if we're given two side lengths and the included angle measure, SAS, or three side lengths, SSS. I'm going to show you a cool formula at the end of the video about doing the three side lengths. So I want you to remember that side A, this lowercase a, is opposite this capital A, this angle. And see how the lowercase b is opposite angle b for that side? And this side, lowercase c, is opposite this angle c, okay? Using the law of cosines, we can find each measure and round lengths to the nearest tenth and angle measures to the nearest degree. And it wants us to find side bc, this red one. Looking at the diagram, we can see AC is a 9, angle A is 62 degrees, AB is 14. So using the law of cosines and using this one right here, we're going to do BC squared is equal to AB squared plus AC squared minus 2 times AB times AC. When we substitute in the given values, we have 14 squared plus 9 squared minus 2 times 14 times 9 cosine of 62. 14 squared is 196, 9 squared is 81, 14 times 9 is 126. We add the 196 and 81 and get a 277. We do 2 times 126 and get a 252. And using our calculator, we do this and subtract it from 277, and we get 158.6932. Now, because this is BC squared, we can take the two exponent away and put a radical sign around this side, can't we? We find the square of this, and it comes out to approximately 12.6, so we know this red side BC is approximately 12.6. And for the measure of angle R right here, we would use ST squared is equal to RS squared plus RT squared minus 2 times RS times RT, cosine of R. That would give us a 9 squared is equal to 4 squared plus 7 squared minus 2 times 4 times 7 cosine of r. That would give us 81 is equal to 16 plus 49 minus 2 times 28 cosine of r. We add these two together and get a 65. We multiply this and get a 56. And we can subtract this 65 from both sides of the equation. We get 16 is equal to negative 56 cosine of r. We can divide both sides by the negative 56, eliminate this, and we get negative 1656 is equal to the cosine of r. Now, we can use the inverse cosine function to find the measure of angle r. On our calculator, we do the inverse function, and we find it's approximately 106.6015496, which is approximately 107 degrees, okay? Just remember to hit that shift button to do the inverse, okay? And when using the law of cosines, we may end up with a negative cosine ratio. And keep in mind that we can always check our answers by finding all three angle measures in the triangle and confirming they have a sum of 180 degrees.
Let's take a look at this picture. A lot of you know what this is. This is the Tower of Pisa, isn't it? The Leaning Tower. And we've got 56 meters for this side. We've got 40 meters here, and we've got a 100 degree angle here. All right? And the Leaning Tower of Pisa is 56 meters tall. In 1999, the tower made a 100 degree angle with the ground. And to stabilize the tower, an engineer considered attaching a cable. So keep in mind, he didn't do it. He was considering it. He considered attaching a cable from the top of the tower to a point A that's 40 meters from the base. So how long would the cable be and what angle would it make with the ground? So we can round the cable length to the nearest tenth and the angle measure to the nearest degree. First thing we do is we would find the length of the cable. After that, we would find that angle A, okay? So let's find the length of the cable, this AC. So we would have AC squared equals BC squared plus AB squared minus 2 times BC times AB cosine of B for the law of cosines. That would give us 56 squared plus 40 squared minus 2 times 56 times 40 cosine of 100 degrees because we know that's 100 degrees. 56 squared is 3136. 40 squared is 1600. 56 times 40 is 2240. We would add the red and the green together to get a 4736. 2 times 2240 is 4480. And we would do the 4480 cosine of 100 and get this nice negative decimal number. We would subtract it from the 4736, and because we're subtracting a negative, we're going to add the opposite, aren't we? So we're going to get AC squared is approximately 5513.9438. We can take this two exponent away by putting a radical around this side. We find the square root, and we come up with approximately 74.2559. And this number is important because we're going to use this to find the measure of angle A, because we needed the cable length and the measure of angle A, didn't we? But we can round it off to the nearest tenth like it wants us to for the cable length to approximately 74.3 meters, okay? So now we can find that angle measure from the cable to the ground and remember this 74.2559 number, okay? Because that's the cable length. So now to find the measure of angle A, we can use the law of sines. We'll do sine of A over BC is equal to sine of B over AC. We know the cable length is 74.2559, don't we? We know this angle measure is 100 degrees. We know this is 56 meters. So we have the sine of A over 56 is approximately sine of 100 degrees over 74.2559, putting in our calculated values. We can multiply both sides by 56, and these are eliminated, and we get the sine of A is approximately 56 sine of 100 degrees over 74.2559. And we can use the inverse sine function now. The measure of angle A is approximately the inverse sine of 56 sine 100 degrees over 74.2559. This numerator comes out to this nice long decimal number over our cable length. And using the calculator, we find it's approximately 47.9612729, which rounds to the nearest tenth to 48 degrees. Okay? So it's really important to know when to use which law. For the law of sines, we'd use it when we have two angle measures and any side length, ASA or AAS, or two side lengths and a non-included angle measure. We'd use the law of cosines when we have two side lengths and the included measure, or all three side lengths. We can use the law of cosines to find the measure of angle Y. I'm going to find this measure right here. We substitute in the given values, and we would have, because we're trying to find y, we would use 14.7 squared is equal to 6.8 squared plus 9.7 squared minus 2 times 6.8 times 9.7 cosine of y. 14.7 squared is 216.09. 6.8 squared is 46.24. 9.7 squared is 94.09. 6.8 times 9.7 is 65.96. We add these together and get 140.33. We multiply these and get 131.92. And we can subtract the 140.33 from both sides of the equation 
and get 75.76 is equal to negative 131.92 cosine of y. We can divide both sides by this negative 131.92 and we get negative 75.76 over 131.92 is equal to the cosine of y. We can use the inverse cosine function on our calculator and we find that it is approximately 125.05. So we know this angle measure right up here, let's see if I can do this with the camera, is, get my marker I'm using, go in here. So we know this, oops, sorry for cutting you off. We know that angle measure is 125.05 approximately, okay? So we can use the law of sines to find the measure of angle Z because now we have a side-side angle, don't we? A non-included angle. We would do the sine of Y over XZ is equal to the sine of Z over 9.7. We know Y is 125.05 degrees, so that's what we would have here. We multiply both sides by the 9.7 and eliminate it and we can move our sine of z onto the left side. On the right side, we have 9.7 sine of 125.05 degrees over 14.7. We can use the inverse sine function. The measure of angle z is going to equal the inverse sine of, we do this numerator and we get this nice long decimal here. It's over 14.7. We do the math. Remember to hit shift sine to get the inverse we're going to have approximately 32.6971422. We need to round it to the nearest tenth, so it's approximately 33 degrees. So that's using the law of sines, okay? Because we found that angle measure, so now we had a side-side non-included angle. But we can also find the measure of an angle if we know three side lengths by using this formula. So I want you to write this down in your notes and write down what it is. It's to find an, a measure of an angle if you know three side lengths, okay? So what we would do is we would substitute in our a squared, b squared, and minus our c squared, and it would be over two times a times b. We plug in all our numbers, we do our math. This numerator comes out to 262.33 minus 94.09, which is 168.24. This, denominator comes out to 199.92. We do the math and we use the inverse cosine function and we get approximately 32.69726018, which is approximately 33 degrees, which is what we had here. It's approximately 33 degrees. So we know angle Z is approximately 33 degrees, okay? And if we know this is approximately this, and we know this is approximately 33, we would know what X is, wouldn't we? Because it has to equal 180 degrees. We've only got two more videos left for chapter eight. In our next one, it's split into two parts. We're gonna talk about vectors, component form, magnitude, direction, equal and parallel vectors. And the second part of that lesson is vector addition, resultant vector. And then we're gonna move on to some transformations again in chapter nine, okay? So I hope I explained this well enough, and I'm sorry the video was so long, but I had to explain everything for the law of cosines for you to help you out, and I hope it did, and I hope you have a great day, and I'll see you next time. Bye.